Hi, I'm Doug from SubTV and uh, today we're going to look at Keynote, which is Apple's own um, presentation program. It's very similar to Microsoft's PowerPoint, but does actually contain more transitions and effects. So that's something to bear in mind when you're saving your presentations for a colleague to view on PowerPoint as some effects are not supported in PowerPoint. However, apart from this, um, Keynote is directly compatible with PowerPoint should you need it to be but more on that later. So uh, let's just get started by launching Keynote. Now when Keynote starts up it gives you um, lots of different theme choosers, uh, templates which you can use, um, some of which have got some interesting graphics which are worth ripping off but a lot of the time it's often best just to start with a simple black or white. Um, now you'll notice initially that Keynote presents us with two boxes which we can start entering text into immediately um, but again for the time being let's just press command A which highlights absolutely everything on the page and backspace. Right looking at the work area in Keynote we can see that we've got lots of menus here at the top but the most important menu that we'll be using is this inspector here so you can press the inspector button and it will pop up or you can press command option I and that launches the inspector. This window is the most important window you'll use and really everything is here that you will need. Let's start by looking at the um, document inspector on the far left. Most of these options are self-explanatory, automatically play upon open, loop, slideshow, etc. Um, but what I wanted to look at here was slide size which is quite important. Um, a lot of old PC monitors work with uh, 800 by 600 resolution. Um, 1024 by 768, well that's a standard uh, resolution I suppose for these presentations. Um, your 15 inch MacBook Pro generally has 1440 pixels by 900 pixels so let's leave it on 1024 by 768 for the time being. Um, if we move over to the um, slide inspector we have the options of the slide which which is up here slide one now the background color obviously at the moment is white you can change that to a gradient fill if you wish or an image fill which is what I'm going to use so I've prepared an image which is keynote background which is just here on my desktop so in the inspector it's important to look at the difference here between the slide inspector and the build inspector so with the slide inspector you can uh, change the appearance of the slide which we've already done by inserting an image um, and you can also change the transition between your first slide to your second slide and there's various interesting transitions at the moment we don't have a second slide so we're not going to look at that at the moment and then when you look at your build inspector this will deal with transitions on the actual slide itself, so various different text and pictures and anything else which you may have. Okay, so let's click on the text box in the menu up here. And we're presented with the word text, double click that, and we're going to replace that with the words up to 15% student discount from the Apple Higher Education Discount Store up to 15% student discount. Well, I'm going to expand the size of this by holding down command and the plus key. I'm then going to hit the enter button and I'm going to press command A. I'm going to change the actual font. So I'm going to go to the font menu and the font I think we'll use here. Well, obviously this is a this is an ad for Apple for a campaign which we're running at the moment. Um, the font we're going to use is a typical Apple font, uh, which is a Myriad Pro. The actual Apple version we don't have here. They do have a very specific type. but we'll just leave it with Myriad Pro regular. Um, now I'm going to have a close look at this text because I want the top line to line up 
with the bottom line. So if I highlight this top line and press the T, which is a text inspector, I'm going to widen the spacing between the letters just by tapping the up and down on this character menu here. Right, so that's lined it all up. It looks pretty smart. So now I'm just going to highlight this text one more time and add a uh, small effect uh, in the form of a drop down shadow. Um, I choose a, a white color for the shadow and basically offset it to a very small amount, probably about two pixels. Um, and this shadow will really come into effect when I move this text up, which I'm going to do now by using an action on the whole text box. So I select action, I select move and I'm going to just pull my arrow up to the top to demonstrate where this text will move to. So now I click play and you can see that the text moves up to the top and you can see the drop shadow really kicks in there. Now uh, considering this is marketing the Apple Higher Education discount store I'm going to import a um, Apple logo so this is just a regular image. Um, just increase the size and this is where we're going to use our first kind of build in effect so I've got the image selected I select build in and from the drop down menu um, I encourage you to experiment with all these effects but I'm going to use the scale effect so the scale up effect is fine and lastly I'm just going to change the order so the image uh, the movement of the Apple image moves first in and then the second movement happens because this is a presentation which I want to run automatically just to loop over and over without people clicking through, I'm going to select the first transition to uh, happen automatically and then the second transition to happen automatically with the prior build. So the first two transitions take place at the same time. I'm also going to extend the duration of the first and the second transition to about three, three and a half seconds so they both graduate into each other so it just looks a bit more smooth. OK, I've just copied some text from another document and just pressed Command V and pasted it um, into this keynote presentation and it's appeared onto the slide in a text box. So I've got the text box highlighted um, and I'm going to choose a uh, build-in effect for this text. Um, I'm going to choose the typewriter effect. So um, basically it's going to type out the duration. It's quite a lot of text so I'm going to have a quite a long duration so say eight seconds um, and that will mean the text will basically appear across the slide as a typewriter would be typing it and it will take eight seconds to appear. Don't forget as a student or staff you're entitled to up to 15% off the price of a Mac plus you get an extended three year warranty and one year telephone support. So so far we've got three objects on the page. We've got the Apple logo and we've got two text boxes. So let's build those objects out of the um, slide. So I'm just going to select um, the main text and I've, I've gone to the build out option uh, of, of in the inspector and I'm going to drop down the effect and I'm going to choose scale. So that main text is going to scale out. I've done the same with the Apple logo as well. And I've pulled out the little drawer and I've selected automatically happen with prior build. So it will happen at the same time. So the scale effect of the Apple logo will happen at the same time as the scale effect of the text box. I'm going to do the same for the main menu or the, the main heading and this is the effect we will have. So everything comes in, the text writes out as we instructed to do so. And then automatically with that prior build, everything will vanish. Right, okay, so I'm going to have to click the mouse here because it didn't vanish because I forgot to change the transition to happen automatically after the prior build. So let's see, so it was uh, transition four, so I'm going to click down here, automatically happen after build three. And that way, the build out will all automatically happen, which is... Uh, which is what we want to happen. So just it's worth going through all these transitions, make sure that on click is off um, and it's an automatic um, transition. Unless, of course, you're giving the presentation in front of people and you want to click through it at your own pace. So don't forget you can download this keynote presentation and you can take it apart and see what I've done and uh, hopefully use some of the ideas in your own presentations.